Hello there everyone, my name is Oversoul, this is Oversoul Gaming, and welcome back to Let's Replay Kingdom Hearts. Goodbye, sleep. Okay, so... Alright, so the next two, or the next three worlds are Disney Town, Olympus Coliseum, and Deep Space. Obviously, Olympus... <clears throat> Excuse me, Coliseum, you already know what that is. Um, but these other two, Disney Town's pretty self-explanatory. As you can see, the castle is there, so obviously it's just a town inside the castle. Deep Space is uh, Lilo and Stitch. So, but we'll get to that when we get to that. First things first, we're going to go here. Now, Disney Town is... Um, it's basically just a little... Well, no, not technically... Since there's no Hundred Acre Wood in this one, our mini games are in Disney Town instead. But it is not exclusively a mini game world. There's still enemies here. Anyways, they're doing something called the Festival of Dreams right now, and the entirety of it takes place across Terra Ventus and Aqua's story in that order. Um, and but there's like three different mini games you can do. And it, we have to do all three of them as part of the story, but we only do one as each character. So one is Terra, one is Ventus, and one is Aqua. Um, yeah. I mean, after you visit the world once and do the mandatory story-based minigame, then you can come back and do the other ones. But for each character, only one of them is mandatory, and each of them does one. Terra does Rumble Racing, Ventus does Ice Cream Beat, and Aqua does Fruit Ball. Unversed. <laughs> I'll take you on. Look out! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is when we get our glimpse at Pete. Um, before he started working for Maleficent, when he was still a denizen of Disney Town. I believe Pete was once a captain of the guard back there. before he I got demoted for evil, it's nice or just being a pain in the ass. What are you nuts running out onto the course like that? Yeah, that's against the rules. I'm sure you had your reasons, but I can't say that I approve either. Well, rules don't apply when you're up against the unversed. <laughs> rules don't apply? You sound just like Pete. Look, it's Captain Dark. Disguised in shadows, obviously, Captain Dark is Pete. Want to know what's kind of funny is that Pete actually has two personas in this world Captain Dark, the rogue racer, and then Captain Justice, a guy who s pretends to go around and do good deeds for people, but really is just out for himself. Anyways, though, what's funny is that. You deal with Pete as Captain Justice when playing as Ventus and Aqua, but you deal with him as Captain Dark when playing as Terra. How do you like them apples? I am Captain Dark. <laughs> I like how they weren't even in the slightest bit impressed. <laughs> he was like, I am Captain Dark! And then they all just sat there and stared at him. Like, Jesus, don't you fucking Pete's eyeballs are all like half the size of Terra's head. Jesus, he could literally eat him if he wanted to. Oh, did you see his whole jaw? His whole, whole fucking jaw is the same length of fucking Terra's shoulder blade. I need to defeat the unversed. Jesus Christ. Tell me what I've got to do. Are you talking about all those carts that look like scary, ugly monsters? He's a fucking monster, when you think about it. Jeez. Well, we've only ever seen the monsters on the track. That's it! Terra, you just need to enter the races. And while you're at it, take that Captain Dark down a notch or two. He's always breaking the rules and causing trouble. I have to become a racer? <laughs> Terra said, what? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure I don't, I don't want to do it. this fucking tedious nonsense. I'll play by the rules. Oh. Yay! Terror's gonna be a new racer! Just come talk to me whenever you're ready. I'll get you signed up and everything. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Cool thing and all. Cool, yeah. Okay, alright, cool. Nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. <laughs> Okay, 
Tokyo, I gotta, I gotta be honest. I love Birth by Sleep, but you really gotta. You have to admit that they were kind of lazy with the worlds in this one. I mean, it's still cool and all, but like Disney Town is just an expansion of Disney Castle. It's even got the same blasted theme music for the most part, and now Uranian Garden is just Hollow Bastion. Okay. uh... All right, so in order to start the race, we just come over here and talk to these guys, but there is a whole rest of this world for us to explore, so let's go check it out. Let's show you around the town. Because as soon as we finish the rumble race, our part here is done, so we have a little bit of time to spare, so let's just go grab some chests real quick. Are you different or We do a little bit of leveling up, shall we? I'd like to level up Crawling Fire so I can meld it in with um, Fission Fire Argo finally and get Mega Flare. Okay. Payback Fang. You see, that's why I did this. Use Paybacks to counterattack after an enemy attack sends you fly. There's some good chests here in Disney World, or Disney Town. One of the, um... Some of the really good stuff, though, requires us to have upgraded abilities so we can't reach it yet. And we gotta screw around with this whole underground pinball game that I just am not doing today. I figured I'd just show you this one. I just figured I'd at least show you the town. Well, plus for the whole to activate the whole pinball thing, we need uh, thunder magic that I don't have a lot of right now. Let's go. Dark salvo. Well, that's right. It hasn't leveled up much yet. Not like my meteor ability, which is like just OP now. I wanted to try something new. It's the problem with equipping new abilities, though, is that they're always weaker in the start because they haven't leveled up. But it's okay. Fire! Fire! Want some? I like freeze rate better than strike rate because it's the same thing, but sometimes it freezes the enemies in place. <laughs> Excuse me. I know it's kind of a newer thing they started uh, experimenting with in this one is uh, those kind of status elements you could put on enemies. Status elements, sorry. That you could put on enemies with the abilities. Now, from what I've seen in the gameplay of Birth by Sleep 0.2, uh, which is basically going to carry over into Kingdom Hearts 3, the magic has area of effect now, like it does in Final Fantasy 15. So, like, for example, if you use Blizzard magic, it will just, like, go all over the arena. You can slip and slide on it, and you can, fro like, Shadow Heartless will walk around, and if they got, like, hit by some of the Blizzard magic, they'll have, like, they'll be, like, frosted over a little bit. Like, the, like the, the grass in the morning on the winter. It's actually really cool. Like, they went into all those intricate little details for the, uh, thing. Anyways... This is for the minigame Ice Cream Beat, that's what we'll play as Ventus. This is also where the Festival of Dreams award show takes place, so we'll come upon that later during Aqua's story. <laughs> Map. And over here is the marketplace, and this is where Aqua, during her story, this is where you play Fruit Ball. And we'll come into that during Aqua's so. so. Alright, so now you've seen the town. Well, I guess I could show you the. I guess I could show you the little. Oh, no, that's right. I don't have Thunder Magic. I can't. My bad. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to show you the Pinball Arena, but I realized I don't have Thunder Magic. I promise you, you will get to see the little underground pinball area as one of the characters. I'm just not sure which one yet. Probably Ventus, because it's easier for him to get across. Okay. God, I 
love that. How can you not love that? So awesome. Alright, here we go. Oh, by the way, I believe each of the... I don't know if... I don't know what Fruit Ball gives you, but I know that Rumble Racing and Ice Cream B, if you manage to finish, like, completely finish the mini like, every possible level those mini games have to offer you, they both unlock Keyblades. Now here's what I'm gonna do. For this, for this racing one, I'm just gonna do this first one that's part of the story, and then we'll be done with this world. That'll literally be it. But, um off recording, I'm gonna do the rest of the races, because this is like the one, well it's not the only chance, but this is the only time it's relevant, there's a key, the Keyblade we get is called Victory Lane, I think, or something like that, and it's stronger than anything we have now, but only until we finish the next world, which is the Olympus Coliseum, because after finishing that one, we get another Keyblade, which is even better, <laughs> like immediately, so if we don't get this one now, then it'll be pointless, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to just do the story part for you, and then I will do the other races on my own. And they're not easy. It is something that's pretty akin to Mario Kart, though. It is. It's basically just a kart racer. Without the weapons, though, technically. So maybe not so much a kart racer, but... Accelerate with X, break with square... Man, considering that this... Oh, that's right, I guess I could see why. This was originally on the PSP, so I guess that makes sense for the whole... Alright, so you can't... Breaking helps you do a sharp turn, and... Eh! I know all of the secrets and paths to take. What you want to do is you want to take all of the shortcuts, completely avoid the tornado as best you can, because... They'll just fuck you up. And then use your barrier whenever you hear the beep beep beep, because it means someone's coming to get you. And then when you come up on them, you want to use Skid Charge. Oh, and also, yeah, the other racers are smart enough to use shortcuts, just not in this race. Alright, cool, we just barely made that. Yeah, you only, you have to use your brake in order to take sharp enough turns. Because if you if you don't, you'll end up hitting the fence, which ouch, slows you down, which I just did anyways, but... Yeah, I've never seen the other racers take a shortcut in this, like, first race here. Oh, that was almost bad. Those tornadoes, if you hit them, they really fucking slow you down. It's huge, huge pain in the ass. Okay, that was closer to what I was supposed to do. You have to remember, this game was originally on the PSP, so the controls for the racing are really wonky. Kind of heavy-handed and hard to control. Okay. All right, one more lap. We got one of them on our ass, but if we can manage to keep this up, we'll be good. Oh shit! Okay. Got him by doing that. And... alright, we won, basically. Yay! You have to win. You have to win in order to keep going as part of the story, so... I will tell you, though, that these tracks start to get ridiculous. My god, they're a pain in the ass. So it's gonna take me a while. I'm probably gonna get super pissed trying to finish all of them to get that goddamn keyblade. But I'm so tired of using these other ones, I want a new one, so it's fucking worth it, in my opinion. Captain Dark! Well, he came in the top three, so I guess I can't... I like Glidewinder. I like how, like, out of all the racers, one of them was an unversed. Oh, yeah, now you can do Rumble Racing for fun in the Mirage Arena, too, on top of those battles that they have. Speaking of which, I was thinking, when I go back and do the Mirage Arena to get that one Zanehort report... I might record that without commentary, but then throw it up here as a bonus episode. Oh, my cart must have sprung a spring. You yahoos just wait. Next time, I'll clubber all of you. <laughs> Yippee! I hope he's gone for good. Nobody's gonna vote for a weasel like you, Pete. 
Pete? Vote? What are you talking about? Chip means the Million Dreams Award. Yep. It's a very popular part of our dream festival. Everyone in town votes for who we think is the most exemplary citizen. And since everybody knows how much of a troublemaker Pete is, he probably figured wearing a disguise was the only way he'd get any votes. No votes, no prize. Yeah, the prize is all he really wants anyway. He doesn't care about being a good citizen. Oh, I think that's very sad. The award is supposed to help us appreciate how much we all look out for each other every day. Well, one thing I know for sure, I'm voting for I don't know why, but to me it just sounds like something that they would do... <laughs> like, back when I was in high school. Okay, now everybody, you well, say something nice something about the person next to you. I learned that you don't always have to bend the rules to reach your goals. Like, fuck you mean, I don't like other people, go away. All this time... I've been staring at no, the No, but darkness. seriously. But this is Disney Town after all, so they gotta do to something all cheery and cutesy and vomit inducing. And for them, this is it's the Million Dreams Festival. So basically that's the story of Disney Town. All of these other worlds are dealing with dealing with serious problems like a evil queen trying to murder a princess and uh, you know, shit like that. You know, pure evil trying to take over. Oh, that. Meanwhile, at Disney Town, Pete's up to his old tricks again, as the citizens have the Million Dreams Festival, and Pete tries to get all of the votes for himself. But does he learn a lesson in the process? Tune in next time to find out, children. It's like a fucking glorified episode of Mickey Mouse's Clubhouse, except no, Pete doesn't learn shit, by the way, obviously, and that's not a spoiler, because you've seen the other games that take place in the future, obviously, he works for the movies, so, but not now, not now, not now he doesn't, not now he's still just a, actually, right now he's still just a troublemaking little minor nuisance, but once Maleficent recruits him to her cause, that's when he becomes more of a problem later on in Kingdom Hearts 2, but... And games after that, too. Events that you have yet to see. Like, Coded and Dream Drop Distance. So, Anyways, but, that'll be it for this episode. I'm gonna stop here, and in the next episode, we'll tackle the Olympus Coliseum. Now, since this is ten years into the past, by the way, we get to see Hercules as a scrawny-ass teenager. So it's not buff Hercules like we're used to. It's the skinny-ass one from the TV show. So, and the beginning of the movie, of course. So, look forward to that. And also, remember how Cloud was in this one? Well, consider the game that is the prequel to Final Fantasy VII. And, um, consider that this is a prequel to the first game, and then take a wild stab at which character from Final Fantasy might be in this world. I'll give you a hint. <clears throat> Crisis Core. Anyways... That'll be it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Oversoul. This is Oversoul Gaming. You've been fantastic. And I will catch you, possibly on another day. Definitely at another time, and likely in another video. Okay, goodbye.